And you don't want to get to that point because then your faith starts to lose. You start to lose your faith in God. So every time you get ready to do something, keep building with the blocks of the word. The word of God is the sword. Even if it's in your business, use the sword in your business. Gosh, yes. (laughs) Anybody got any questions so far? Any questions or comments so far? Any questions or comments? Okay. Okay, so whenever you do look at the world's perspective of things, I tell you what it does. It puts a darkness on you. And every time you get ready to start growing, that shadow comes over you. And it doesn't give the proper lighting. You hear that? It doesn't give the proper lighting for growth. So you start to wither down. You wither down. And that's what causes you to feel like you're not worthy. That's what causes you to feel like you're not worthy of having a a good husband or, or a big bank account. You're not worthy of the building that you've been looking at that you wanted to go and buy to create a store your own storefront, you know, it it puts these things in you, makes you feel like, well, you don't write like the rest of them, so you're not an author. That ain't what God says. If he gave it to you, then guess what? If you were called and elected by God's grace, by his grace, it is only by the grace of God that any of us can do anything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's only by the grace of God. So whenever you build that foundation, it has to be solid structure. It has to be fed some good mortar. (laughs) It has to be a good foundation, not nothing that's going to wilt away like sand. You know, at the beach, you can build a sand castle, and if the water hit it, what will it do? It'll knock down. But when you see them rocks, you see that water hitting up against the rocks. The rocks standing there taking it, taking it, just taking it. The rocks that you be seeing, um, you usually see them in other countries and stuff where they're getting hit with lots of water. The rocks be still there while the sand be went a different way. So make sure that you're believing in the word of God so that you can have a healthy and strong foundation and that you can start believing in yourself and building your self-worth. And once you start to build your self-worth, then you will go and be able to find out what it is you need to do in order to build your net worth. Now, there are some things that you can do to build your net worth, but it's not going to prosper you in until you build who you are up in, in, internally. Okay, and let me just give y'all this definition of pillar, because Peter was considered the pillar of the church. In, in, In other words, he was considered to be a foundation or support, someone indispensable. He was necessary, essential, vital, crucial. He was a key to having a success. He was a must have. Y'all always see those signs that say must have. He was a must have. He was the utmost important. He had utmost importance in the church. So that's how you want to be over your life, over your foundations, I mean, over the things that you're doing. You want Jesus to be your pillar, to be your rock, to be your foundation so that you know that whatever stuff comes your way that you're still going to stand because you know with God all things are possible and you know that Jesus will never leave nor forsake you even if you don't hear from him you know that he's somewhere around doing something or he got some angels about that's coming in on your behalf even the angels will rejoice once you start getting more into your spiritual side of things Okay, and y'all give me just a second because I'm really trying to find the scripture about the identity. I had it all week long, too. It was in Peter, too. I want to say, okay, I'm going to go with this and see if this is it. I really want to read this to you just in case you have lost your identity, lost your way, or, you know, ended up in a situation that caused you to feel like you were less than. 
or around people that tell you that that you're not going to um, be able to do certain things, those naysayers, those negative folks who ain't got no foundation, so guess what? They want to knock you off in your foundation too. Okay, First Peter in 10, First Peter 2 and 10 says, once you were not a people, but now you are people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And I'm going to read you the, um, uh, let me see, which version was it? I want to read you this version here. Um, let me see. The New Living Translation says, once you had no identity as people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. In other words, you know, when you're just out here doing worldly things for worldly reasons, your identity is lost. It's shuffled. It means you're going to keep moving from business to business because you don't know who you are. You're going to keep doing different things because you have yet set the foundation, the Christ-like foundation the pillar. You have yet set the pillar in it. You have not brought Jesus into it the way you're supposed to have. You may have prayed on it and walked off and assumed this is what I'm supposed to do before you got the answer. And things didn't work out the way you wanted it to. But now you need to understand what God is saying. Even if you have fallen, you need to understand that you have identity. You still have identity even if you fall. Even if you fail, you still have identity. Remember, Peter disowned. He denied Jesus three times. Jesus told him, when that, on the third time you deny me, the rooster will crow. There are some people who are denying Jesus as well. Whenever you get around people who don't believe like you believe, you start dummying down what you really know. And guess what? That hurts you on the inside. And you know it's wrong. And then you start to let your self-worth go down even more just because people don't believe what you believe. Well, listen, there's a lot of people. I still be around non-believers. Listen, that's how confident I am in the Lord. I'm around non-believers. I'm not trying to convince them that, hey, you need to change over or nothing like that. I'm just living the life that God gave me. And when they see the light that God has upon my life and my identity, because your identity will show whenever you begin to live it, it will show. And they don't have no choice but to humble down. They humble down. And, and, and they are thankful as well. One guy told me he did not believe. He did not believe in God or Jesus. He didn't believe. But this fella got sick. He broke up off. I mean, he broke out all over his body. He began to swell up. Doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong. It, it, it was looking bad for a brother. Let me say it like that. It was looking real bad for a brother. He had been in the hospital three weeks, and he got in contact with my brother. He said, please tell your sister to pray for me. So you see, some people are just confused about their identity, but if you be a light in front of them, it will be, whenever it's time to be necessary, it, it will mean something. It would give them light. It would give them hope. It would, it would give them a chance to consider their ways. Consider the ways. After I prayed for that man, it was less than 24 hours. I told my brother, I, I said, tell him to look for something in less than 24 hours. That boy called me back, said that stuff, and then went down. It had went down, and the doctor said he could go home within 24 hours. That's the God I serve. That's why when I look at people bragging about the money that they have and the things that they can do, it don't faze me. It don't faze me because I had money before. I had lots of money before, and I'm probably going to get lots again. Matter of fact, I know I'm going to get lots again. <laughs> I'm going to get lots again, but there's a difference. There's a difference when you know the Lord. When you know the Lord, you spend different, you think of others. Every dime I got, I didn't mind splitting with somebody else who had nothing, who had less than. And it was times, even though I knew somebody wasted their money, I still gave anyway from my heart because I remembered. This is the humble part. I remembered when that was me too. When that was me too before I knew any better, I remembered. 
So whenever you want to build up your self-worth, you go back to Jesus. A lot of people are taking all these classes of doing this and doing that. And, you know, and I think that's how a lot of times our sisters and brothers in Christ are getting confused because they're not realizing that some of these classes are introducing you to new religions. And they don't realize it. See, I recognize it. I discerned. When that woman was teaching, I was like, yeah, she's calling out the Bible, but she's calling out some other stuff, too. She wants some Buddha and everybody else, too. Now, I don't knock nobody's religion off at all, but everything ain't for everybody. So you got to be careful how you attach to people. you got to be careful how you attach to people and what it is that they're doing because you may be attaching to something that you ain't ready for. Anybody else got any questions? Any questions or comments? Y'all know we're not going to have no homework assignment this week because y'all are going to be on spring break. As always, I tell y'all whenever there's spring break for your children, we also recognize it here as well. Okay? So I'm going to read. I'm going to read a little bit more of First Peter. And, y'all, when you get time for yourself, just go back and go over these scriptures and pray to God to give you understanding for it. If you did not get what you needed tonight, pray to God to give you understanding for it. Because I understand that we can say we have faith all day, but faith without works is dead. We got so much that we have to continue working on for the rest of our lives. We, it's, it's like being, it, it is an army. We're in the army of the Lord. So we have to continue to build. We have to continue to advance and grow because Satan, he's he going to use the same tactics, but he's going to use different people. He's going to introduce you to it differently. Like I said, I was on there getting that business class, and then that woman, she started talking outside her neck. <laughs> and I said, wait, hold it, hold it. Uh-uh. That ain't right. That ain't right. So I, I didn't I didn't believe in what she was saying. It didn't set with my spirit because my spirit says wherever the spirit of the Lord is, is liberty. I didn't feel liberty in what she was doing. And I didn't feel like I would be doing my clients justice if I did what she did. No, no way. I can't do people like that. Okay, so um. Let me read a little bit more of this first Peter, y'all. We didn't skip back to first Peter. <laughs> um, let me see. Oh, I'm deciding which one I want to give y'all. Okay, first Peter, second chapter. Therefore rid yourselves of all malice and the, and all deceit, hypocrisy. <laughs> didn't I just pronounce that funny? Envy and slander of every kind, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, the Lord is good. So you have to rid yourselves of a lot of this stuff that's going on nowadays. It's hard to tell who's real and who's fake. And even sometimes people can go in and put their name on somebody else's fruit for a little while and make it look good. But I encourage all of you to really think about your salvation when it comes down to building up financially. Because the love of money can get so out of hand, and you can be loving it in your heart but not saying it with your mouth. You see, because the devil is slick like that. The love of it can be in your heart, but you never say it. So, therefore, you don't, you're do not you not aware that you have a problem. That's about like some mental patients. They're not aware that they have a problem because it's normal to them. It's what they're used to. So you have to go and ask God to cleanse your heart, creating your clean and new heart. You have to... Um, Wait a minute. You have to do those things, and you have to get back to the foundation of what God is saying to you. Let's see. My scripture moved, and I don't like that. <laughs> it moved on me. But you have to go back to what God is saying. So, y'all, it's 1015. This is the thing. I'm not going to give y'all no homework. But I do want you to take time. <laughs> 